I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that you clicked on this video, yeah, sure, out of a little bit of curiosity, but also out of hope because you know in your heart that you're just simply not driving the ball as far as you know you should. So if you watched my anyone can drive it 250 yards video, uh, you saw on that that there are some criteria, for example, a minimum club speed of 90 miles an hour. When you're gonna move up to 280, which I know you can, <laughs> I can know you can do this, transition from 250 up to 280, the requirements start to get a little bit more stringent. So we're gonna go into detail on a few different things that you're gonna to need to tighten up if you're going to reach this 280 uh, successfully and consistently. So if you wanna learn how to hit a ball this far, or maybe you're not gonna get it 280, but still following these principles that I'm about to explain is gonna help you get more yards off the tee, and that's not a bad thing. So by all means, stay tuned. <music> Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey to hit it longer and straighter off the tee, all the way to the green, just be pure, hit it solid because hitting the ball like that is just really fun, isn't it? So if you agree, then please join us at the subscribe button, like this video at the end if you liked it or got some benefit out of it and leave a comment down below. And over at my website, HitItLonger.com, again, there is a feature we have called uh, swing analysis you can click on that you can submit a video for me personally i will analyze your swing for you and i'll try to get you moving in the right direction so you can hit it longer and straighter too all right so we're talking about hitting drives out regularly consistently to 280 so if you watch the 250 video one of the requirements was that you're going to need to get up to about 90 miles an hour so we're going to have to add 10 to that gonna need about 100 miles an hour to consistently hit it 280 yards. Um, it can be done with a couple miles an hour less than that, but you're gonna have to be really perfect, and that means, hey, you might not be able to be perfect consistently. I mean, who can do that? So about 100 miles an hour is a good benchmark to start with, and let's figure out how we're gonna get that done. All right, in my own personal teaching, I've had many uh, people over the age of 70 who have been able to attain a consistent speed of 100 miles per hour, club head speed. So it is doable. Age does not necessarily have a lot to do with it, but instead, if we're gonna make that jump from 90 to 100, or just get you faster in general, we're gonna have to work on a little bit of speed training. So I got my regular driver for this task, and I've got the speed whoosh, which is available on my site. It's just a nice um, over speed tool that's gonna help you feel what speed feels like. I've also got a blue radar here to help measure the swings. And it doesn't matter what my swings are, it's just more that you can come up with a routine that you will stick to three times a week. I like to organize these into sets of about five or six swings that go faster, 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 faster. So this would just be kind of a first swing. And then whatever that reads, I'll try to go a little bit faster and then faster again. So you're gonna try to make six consecutive swings where you just keep trying to beat what the radar says five consecutive times and by the sixth swing, you'll really be going all out. After a couple sets of these, I might then move to my driver, do the same thing, climb the speed ladder. So just like that, I might try to go faster, 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 until by the end of the set, I'm all out. Gaining speed is not a necessarily a strength or power exercise. It's mostly two things. It's giving yourself permission to lose control. Most of you out there who are not swinging as fast as you want, simply swing too under control and not reckless enough not explosive enough. So as you add the speed as you go, you're learning how to basically give yourself permission to be reckless and out of control and get used to that sensation. Now, the, the other mechanism that helps us move from 90 to 100 is simply coordination. Your muscles have get a better ability to 
fire all at the same time. Your balance gets better underneath you while it might be wobbly as you move up faster. At first, you start to kind of put a base underneath that as your brain starts to figure out how to balance out all these new extra forces that are going on. Now, if you're using a speed whoosh with the blue radar, your target is 120 miles per hour because this moves about 20% faster than your normal driver. All right, so now that we have enough club head speed theoretically to reach that 280 mark and 100 miles an hour can theoretically create a few more yards than even 280. So we don't have to be dead on perfect, but certainly we're gonna have to increase our efficiency because I know some of you out there watching this are saying, hey, I skipped the first part because I already swing 100 miles an hour, but I'm only hitting it like 250 or 260 and I don't know how you're getting 280 out of this. Well, the next big step is going to be in optimizing the ball flight. And what that means specifically is we're gonna be trying for a combination of high launch and low spin. And that's gonna come from a little bit of maybe tweak in your technique, uh, maybe a tweak in your setup. But I've shown this to be possible. I've taken people in lessons from like 3,500 spin down to 2,000 spin, very small amount of time. So it's not equipment necessarily. Equipment only plays a small part compared to the wielder of the equipment, the user, the error that you can make in creating either too low of a launch or especially way too much backspin really crushes that potential for hitting it out there 280 and it makes you have to swing 105, 108 just to get it the same 280 yards. So the first thing to work on would be the getting the launch angle up. And to do that, we're gonna need a nice, healthy upstrike uh, with the drive on the ball, which means we're gonna have to make sure we're coming in shallow with our swing plane a bit out to the right or a little bit inside out. And see the way that's gonna cancel out is I come under this, this head cover nice and shallow. I'm gonna reach my low point behind the ball several inches. And at this point, sure, the club is moving inside to out quite a bit, but it's not done yet. So as I come upwards into the ball, the path squares itself out to a straighter path. So you can have an inside out plane with an upstrike and that's gonna cancel out into a nice straight path. But it's that upstrike that we really need. We wanna be launching at 100 miles an hour. We wanna be, boy, if we could get it to 14 launch angle, that would be fantastic. Let me have, take a couple swings at it and we'll see if I can successfully navigate shallow underneath this head cover and you'll see the angle of attack reading coming up. All right, so you saw the animation of the shot. The uh, data is up here on the screen. You can see that I was able to actually achieve uh, the whole goal of the video, which is to hit a ball over 280 yards. And I actually needed just under 100 miles an hour to do it. So a super efficient shot, but you can see that my angle of attack was upwards uh, nearly seven degrees. So my swing plane was six and a half degrees to the right but my path was only one degree inside out. So despite swinging, having a little bit of a rightward swing plane, I hit up on it so much and that geometry kind of cancels out and makes the path be very, very straight. Now, a second thing I was doing, get that much of a positive angle of attack on that drive was something at setup. So I had that ball really, really forward in the stance. I'm trying to get that ball to line up off the big toe of the left foot. So a lot of people out there, you're still playing it either at the instep or even well inside the instep. And this is costing you this uh, angle of attack that's so precious for really maximizing out our distance efficiency. All right, so there's gonna be a couple different ways now that we kind of have defined the shape of the swing that we're trying to make. Uh, number one is making sure that you have an adjustable driver that you can now, now that your launch is so much higher and you're, you probably feel like at this point, boy, I'm really getting too much lift. It's coming down, landing without any roll. But this is now where we're gonna take the opportunity, take advantage of that high launch angle 
we're going to knock a couple degrees off of that by lowering the loft, the stated loft on your club using your wrench tool. And you can set it down, you know, set it down a couple of notches to begin with. Then you can always play with it from there. But we're also going to need a little, a little technique in order to get that spin rate down. And that's going to be, we're not going to be able to do a low rate of spin if there's any pulling or holding, harpooning, delaying the release, all that stuff is going to tend to give you a lot higher spin. So you want to do a lot of this exercise. This exercise will match very nicely with the shape of the swing I was trying to do under the head cover, inside and upwards. And that's the wrap the pole exercise. You'll see I'm not, never going to let my elbow touch here. And I'm going to practice throwing this club around the pole, 90 degree wrist cock to the left hand, throw it to around to a 90 degree wrist cock at the right forearm without ever allowing the upper arm or the elbow to touch the pole. So if you've ever heard of the Mike Austin uh, snowbank, mud bank uh, story, this is kind of the same thing, but at baseball level. So you're going to be trying to take this release type action where you're really throwing away the lag as early as possible in order to get that club turning upwards, squaring up, almost not really, but it's almost like it comes up and over like a tennis top spin and definitely takes a lot of backspin off of the shot. So we're going to need with that 14 launch that I'm shooting for, I would love to see something around 2000 RPMs of spin. And that's really going to help me um, complete this equation, 100 miles an hour with the really efficient um, ball flight. And we're going to be able to get it out there to 280 or so. All right, so you notice I didn't do a lot of uh, discussion in this video about actual club selection. I'm using a nine degree stiff and really all you've got to do is get it in the general ballpark. So really any kind of stiff shaft is going to work at 100 miles an hour. It's pretty much right in the middle and somewhere between eight, eight and a half to nine and a half degrees, depending on the model of the driver is going to work. You have to play with it a little bit. So once you get the shape of swing and the release going and you're able to tune the driver and get that ball flight nosing over with less spin. All right, let me see if I can get one more off that meets the criteria. 100 miles an hour or less, but still getting out there to 280 or more. Let's see. All right, those are some good drives. Again, the name of the game is sure get enough club head speed up to be successful in getting out to this distance but it starts to be more and more about being distance efficient where most golfers out there are missing 20 30 even 40 yards off their average tee shot because they don't have the right launch angle contact spin rate landing angle that kind of stuff we need the proper ball flight to get it out there as far as we want to go Hey, this is feeling pretty good, so I'm going to go and hit some more, but thanks so much for watching. Thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moore Park, California for hosting us on another perfect day out here in Southern California. Um, and as always, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take good care, everybody.